Frederick, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining. Hello, Bogdan. My pleasure. Um, Frederick, there's so many questions I want to ask you, but I think the first one we have to start with, um, you know, your coaching career and how maybe you can talk a little bit about how you decided to start and why did you decide to start uh, coaching after pretty successful uh, career in, uh, in tennis? Yeah, I mean, uh, the first thing is like, um, yeah, I decided to coach because uh, I wanted to transfer my knowledge, you know, um, to some players that were like uh, not able to, uh, to, go, um, to go in the French Federation and to want to stay in their region because I'm from the southwest of France. And uh, I will say in my time in the 80s, 80s, if you want to do like a professional career, you had to go in the national center in Paris or Poitiers. And uh, so, but it was because you have to leave your family very early. You know, at, uh, in my case, was 11 years old, so it's uh, it's pretty much early. So when I stopped my career in '99, uh, I, yeah, I decided to to build an academy in the southwest of France, in Pau, uh, in the club of my coach, and and yes, and to give the opportunity to to young players who have who have talent, who have like a, a project, to stay in the in the region and uh, and mm -hmm. to try to to reach the the, the high level it's what i did with uh, jeremy chardy he was uh, 12 years old when we start and we we went uh, uh, to all the process to search in the world so that was that was my yeah, first so, experience so actually that's that's my next question it's amazing that you mentioned that because i wanted to talk to you uh, if you can maybe walk through uh, us you start a player with at 12 years old and you finish like pretty much at the top of the game. Um, if you can talk about priorities that were important for you at every stage of his development. Yeah. The, you know, maybe like 12, 12 to 14, what did you focus? Like 14 to 6, what was the important thing? Yeah, things? exactly. We, I, I was lucky and it was uh, one of my, uh, really, uh, one of my goals is like to understand uh, in my career uh, and to transfer all this process that, that where I went through. And uh, I will say, uh, because I start with Jeremy at 12 years old, so let's start just a little bit before, because even if it's, uh, I didn't have the important, let's say from 6 to, to 12, is to, to have like, um, to develop a, a right technique for, for the tennis, you know, the technical part is very important. Mm -hmm. And at this age is very important because it's the, like the first, uh, the first steps, you know, you have to find the right, uh, the right professional. And you have to keep the, also to, to do a lot of sports like this. You develop a lot of coordination skills and to, to stay, uh, to enjoy the game. Because when you are young, you don't have to, to do the hours, you know, you, you have to enjoy, you know, when you are a kid, you, you love to play. But at the same time, because uh, the tennis is a, a, a technical sport, you have to learn the right habits in, the, in terms of technical. So I would say between six and 12, that's the, the coordination and the focus technical fundamentals are really important and to, to keep like a, mm -hmm. the tennis as a game. Then, uh, let's say from 12 uh, to, uh, it depends with, for the girls or for the boys, because sometimes the girls are like uh, more mature, you know, uh, they, they are growing uh, earlier. So let's say between 12 and 16, I will say normally uh, now the hormones, the, the, you, you start to, 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 be, yeah, to, 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 to grow, uh, you, you start to have like uh, um, the possibility to, to gain muscle, you know, you, you, you start, but, but essentially, uh, le, le, let's stay in the, in the step of like, you, you take, you grow. That's why it's very important to, to start to, um, that the player start to have like, um, uh, prevention, injury prevention, like, because you, the quantity is uh, much more at 12 years old. You, you need to do like, uh, let's say two to four hours a day of tennis plus a little bit of, uh, of fitness, one hour. So it's very important to, uh, to understand the fundamental, uh, fundamentals of injury prevention. That means you, you, you have to warm up, you have to stretch after, so you have to learn about that. And then, so this is the, the, um, the prevention part. In terms of fitness, you can start to, to develop like the classic, uh, the classic uh, capacity, like uh, to develop the endurance, a uh, little bit of uh, of the, the the strength, the explosiveness, you know, you, uh, with the fitness uh, the fitness coach. And in tennis, you start to to build your tactical ID because uh, you know you start to uh, to have some experience. You you, you are uh, the, the the player is uh, 
is uh, now is um, is uh, interesting in his project, you know, because he he is able to 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 have like uh, some exchange with the coach. So you you really start to uh, this uh, tactical uh, ID. Uh, that's pretty much like uh, between 12 and 16. That's pretty much like the the big blocks that are important, you know, tactical ID. You start to grow, so then you have to be careful of the injury prevention. And in the fitness part, you, yeah, you start to develop the endurance, the strength, explosiveness. And then after, because it, 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 when I'm talking about that, that is really when the, the young player have, have, have um, like a high-level project. That means that they really want to, to, yeah, to play the, the high level. That means uh, you, have, you have the school at the same time, so you have to find uh, the right person around you. Uh, you have to find a good academy or a good coach that uh, want to invest time, uh, you know, in your project. That's also the role of the parents, you know, like to, to build all, uh, all of that, all, uh, all that uh, around the player. Um, stop me, actually, because uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to structure <laughs> all the, all, yeah, all the yeah, points. Yeah, of course. Uh, because uh, it's very important to be between 12 and 16 to have all those things uh, around the, around the, the, the young player, because then. After 16, uh, there is the, the transition with the junior. Uh, that it's very important if you are not, you don't have the chance to have like a strong federation, or if you are not in the in the top uh, top five in your country, then uh, you, you 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 need to have like some result in junior to maybe to have some some sponsor to do the transition to the tour. You know, so that's also yeah. an important part that you 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 need to be ready to have some kind of result in the juniors. Uh, yeah, to 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 be able to confirm your level and to have like some, uh, you know, if you are at the federation, then of course they are going going to help you with the expenses and to to do the transition to the pro. But more important, it, it's it's uh, it's uh, all the technical step, the tactical ID, the injury prevention, the fitness part. To have a team around you, it's very important to have this uh, all those uh, pillars like uh, sets because then when you go to the tour level. Uh, if those, uh, if there is like um, uh, a big weakness, big weakness in those pillars, then it's going to be difficult because then you are going to start to play at the high level with this pressure of the the pressure of the result and the pressure of the money. Because if you don't have result, you don't have money to travel, and then and then then the pressure is more and more after the, the tra- when you are going to be pro. That's why it's uh, once again it's very important to that you have like all the parents, all the coach to have a, a vision. A vision, uh, a middle-term, long-term vision to build all those pillars, uh, and of course, in the right timing. What's the most difficult uh, for a tennis player to transition from junior to uh, to a uh, you know adult uh, pro events? Yeah, I will say that uh, you start to travel a lot. When you in junior, you have of course you have the junior grand Chelem, you have a, you have the, the, the circuit. But uh, when you go to the pro, this is a big acceleration. You don't have like too much time to develop your game. You you have to you you play more tournaments, uh, more travel, uh, and this uh, I told you. And of course, it's the mix of you you play like uh, player between 18 and 38 years old, and uh, the mm-hmm. competition is really hard. And you you when you start the, the condition in the future tournaments is not like the are the, not are the, the best condition. You don't you don't have always like. A, the money to have all your team around you. Uh, you have all, not all the practice score that you want, the balls, etc. So it's that's why it's really important to to be prepared for that. You don't mm-hmm. if you, if you are late in one way in those domains, then it's gonna be it's always possible, but it's more difficult. Yeah, uh, in one of your interviews, you mentioned that uh, it's important for you as a coach that your player has balance with life. You know, like it's the, so they're they have balance. How do you create that balance in such busy schedule? Yeah, that's the role. Uh, of course, if the, I, I am lucky like, to work uh, with uh, Felix, that uh, he has a great education because uh, the parents of Felix, uh, you know, they, they always say that it's very important to be before to be a good tennis player. So I was lucky to to continue uh, with that because in, in, in terms of, uh, of my coaching, it's also, you have like a, an education role also because you just, you're not just about tennis. You, are, you have to, you spend a lot of time with your player uh, outside the court. So that means you, you, 
it's important to be balanced to to be able to talk about like uh, other subjects that than tennis uh, and mm. this is uh, this is important because if you are like you need to be in one way obsessed to to do your best on the court but uh, not 24 hours because then you are going to burn yes. burn out <laughs> yeah 100 percent uh if you can talk a little bit about differences between like let's say a player outside of top 100 a player inside top 100 and what does it take to win a grand slam what is the difference because for us you know we look at uh tennis on tv we see players uh, and especially if you even if you're traveling like on a challenger tour, players look somewhat similar. You know, at some point the level becomes very, very close. Yeah. So what does allow one person to get into top hundred and another one to to win a, win a slam? Yeah, that's interesting your question because uh, you can see on TV, for example, uh, you don't see like the the way that the players are eating the ball. If it's clean, you know, you don't see the the volume also of the trajectory. You don't see the all the time the the the, the energy that the player is 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 uh, expensing. You know, like uh, if he's forcing too much the the, the shots. You know, that's something that you cannot see on tennis. It's very flat. You know, you you, you don't see those those, uh, those little difference. So then in live, you can really see like uh, uh, with the eyes of, uh, of of a coach. You know, we have like experience in the challenger tour. Out of the top 100, for example, you can see that some players are like uh, eating less clean the ball. So that, that's, a, that's a, a small difference. Then after, of course, every, every player is different, but you can see they are like uh, they are not playing the right shot at the right moment. I will say that is the, 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 the one of the, the, the big difference. To, because when you are like, uh, uh, of course, the quality are different, like the, the quality of movement of Djokovic. Not uh, not so much player have those quality or the quality of the server of Felix, and not too much player have that different. But uh, but um, yeah, the big difference is to with your qualities is to play the right shot at the right moment. And uh, and I would say there is also another difference that like uh, uh, some players out of the top top hundred, uh, their ID game tactical tactical game are not always uh, aligned with the with their strength. Uh, or emotional strength, mm. mental strength, or physical strength. That means that they are like, you know, they are not efficient enough. And and to finish, it's uh, the difference is, is like a, an addition of a, a lot of small details after because there is also like the the preparation, you know, the preparation, uh, the, the, the the discipline, you know, the, those mental aspect, mental aspect that uh, it's it's a little bit everything everywhere. Yeah, and that's where you know the coach really steps in to identify those strengths and to really find the right tactical uh, ideas for that player. That's where you know what's that's where the coach kind of <laughs> exactly that's where the, his or her job is. Um, can you tell a little bit about um, how it was when you started working with Felix? Because it's been a long time that you uh, that you work with him, and he's completely different player now. So maybe talk a little bit about. Uh, how it was in the beginning yeah like you said the process of the coach is like to okay maybe the, the match is the the truth and then the 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 competition the pressure reveals like the the weakness and the strength and then after you go to the preparation and then you you work you work of course most of the time on the on the strength and it's what i did because we start in 2017 with felix so when you start to work with a player and every player is different, okay, you, you, you have a, uh, you overlook uh, all the technical, tactical, mental, emotional, fitness aspect, and you see, okay, this player, the strength are there, so you have to, you have to work on the strength, you know, so then you have to, mm -hmm. to clean the technique, to, to, to work the fitness in relation with the, with the technique, with the ID game, tactical ID game. Uh, you have to visualize your, your player always going to win a grand slam or to be number one when you have the capacity, of course, and what, what it was the case of Felix, of course. So then, year after year, uh, it's important that the, the, the coach is the guardian of this process. You know, he, he is the guardian of to keep this vision or my player or Felix will be uh, one day number one. So he will start, he was 500. So now he's number six. He finished number six last year. So of course, the process, he... he, he is a better tennis player, 
But I will say that the process is the same because uh, when it was like 500 or six, then you have to, of course, uh, the, now the serve is, is uh, more precise. You no, know, the, the, the the forehand is ID game is more is more clear. You know, he, he knows that he, ha he has to impose your game and how he has to impose his game. He, he, he knows that he also he have a good movement, so he can also uh, win some points in defense. You know, to make the an extra shot for the for the for the opponent. And, and of course, after he's like uh, with the experience, he, he knows himself better, which is an important part because in the competition, there is two fights and there is a fight between you and you and between, between your opponent, between you and you. Yeah. It's like it's the mental, uh, emotional fight. And uh, with your opponent, it's a tactical, as, tactical, tactical fight. So I will say year after year, Felix knows himself better, so he's able to manage those emotions, those mental uh, aspects. And of course, he knows better and better his game, his strength, and uh, and uh, he's playing almost, let's say, always the same player. So we have an historical with uh, those players, and we we learn to to yeah to try to to beat them. Not all of them, but uh, we we have uh, we have some solution because he, he, he I think yeah he, he won against Djokovic, he won against Rafa. Yeah. He, won. He, he won against almost uh, all the all the players. Yeah. So it's it's very uh, interesting to me that you're saying that uh, when you started working with him, for you it was important to really focus on strength right away. Um, and I think this is very this is key for for many reasons, obviously for confidence and, but also you mentioned like for him to discover that he that this is really truly his weapon and to for him to believe. Um, when do you find time to work for weaknesses, like for some some aspects of the game that need to be a little bit more polished? Yeah, that's the that's the big challenge in the high level because you you can see the calendar. It's like <laughs> we start in uh, in January in Australia and we finish with the mm -hmm. Davis Cup last year at the end of November. So uh, the, your question is really precise. Is all we can uh, because there is three four aspects uh, like in the process of the of the the coaching. Um, in, in my coaching is like uh, the repair mode is like uh, it's when you work on the, the technical aspect in, in, on the why you know and this is something that uh, with the high level you have like very small windows because if you go in the repair mode then uh, your player is going to to, lo to lose a little bit of confidence he's going to to don't be in like an instinct mode you know you you, oh, you, you start with, let's say if we want to work on the back end okay you, are, you have to change the technique so he has to to learn different sensation. Uh, so this is this repair. We don't have like too much windows, but this is the quality of the coach with the experience. Okay, the small windows that we have, oh, we have to we have to to be able to do this alchemy. With the second the second mode is the the repetition. When you have the when the player is feeling the the, the new technique, okay, then you have to to repeat to have the precision. And like this is forget, mm -hmm. forgetting always oh, doing the the shot. It's just like focus on the on the target. And that's, of course, the last, uh, the last uh, part is the pre-competition. Then you play some points and you, you are dealing with your new tools. You are dealing to, to apply it like a, as a tactical, uh, tactical game, you know. So in, in the high level, you, you don't really have the time like in the other sports to do, okay, I have six weeks to go in the repair mode, four weeks to go in the repetition, and then after four weeks to do pre-competition. In, in tennis, doesn't exist, except in yeah. the juniors. That's why I, I, at the beginning of the interview, I, I was telling that it's important to do those pillar, pillars really, really well because you have time in the player development. Yes. So in the high level, uh, I have some few, yeah, we have like windows, like last year after the loss in the first or second one in the US Open, we have two weeks. We had two weeks and then we, had, uh, we have two weeks now between Australian Open and the next two months in Rotterdam. And so I have to, we have to find the best alchemy in, uh, okay, we work on the weak, mm -hmm. weakness a little bit, but not too much because uh, the confidence is the key. So we have to, he has to be ready and to be sharp with the strength when we start uh, in the next tournament. Yeah. So if, at what point of development of a player do you, th do you feel like it's more focused on the strength and not so much uh, on the weakness? Uh, like at what, like at, what at age? which age, what, what level? Yeah, I will say, uh, I, I will say because, uh, like I said, between 12 and 16, you, re you really start to know what's going to be the, the, 
the physical aspect of your player. You know, if he's going to be tall, if he's going to be endurance, if he's going to be explosive. So then you, you, you are building the tactical aspect. And, uh, and of course, based on the strength. So I will say like uh, at the end of the, the, when your player is going to, to stop to grow, you know, it's when he has his, 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 um, his, uh, his body is uh, done, you know, like, so I would say around 15, 16. So then, then I, will, I will say, depending on the period of the competition of the European, uh, it, it's going to be like 70, 80, 20 in a competition mode, you know, when you are like in competition. And when you have like a little bit of time, I will say that it's uh, going to be like 50, 50 or 60 on the strength and 40 on the weakness after the age of mm -hmm. si uh, 16 years old. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to ask you about Felix uh, one more question. You know, like when, when I worked for Federation and Felix was like 13, you know, 14, even at that age, and, and same thing with Bianca, like at very like young age, everybody around them believed they're going to be great. They're going to be top 10 players. They're going to win slam. So I saw, I heard it from many coaches. Why do you think is that the case? Like what makes a player, you know, you know, for a coach to look at the player and see this, this player is going to be great. Yeah, that's, well, of course, in the case of Felix that I know a little bit, uh, it's like, a, of course, he, he was uh, already at a high level no, at this age. He was already like, uh, he was already like in the in the, in, the, in the top ten player in uh, in Canada, and also because he, he was playing uh, Ore also he was Ore is an international yes. tournament, so yes. he won he won Ore. So of course there is a level, but for Felix they, they, or like uh, Bianca or other player, then you, you you see something special. And of course Felix, the the coordination, the the physical capacity, and and the, the discipline. The discipline, the project that uh, the parents were like uh, putting around him, you know, they were like uh, the project of uh, of Sam, you know, of Mary, the the, the father and mother of, of Felix. It was really clear that uh, the project was was there, you know. So then you 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 build the life around that and not uh, not in the opposite, you know, not not building uh, around something else, you know. And, and with the quality, yeah. the fitness quality, the mental quality, the discipline, uh, with uh, what Felix also, the maturity had at this age. And of course, uh, I didn't saw uh, Felix play at 12 years old, but I saw him uh, uh, in a match at 14. But he has already like, uh, you know, uh, uh, he was like eating the ball at 14 years old, like uh, not, not so much player yes. was he. <laughs> because you yes. saw, I think you saw that also, you know. Uh, yes, yes, it was incredible. No, I, I saw him, I saw them for the first time, him, at 14 playing U18 nationals uh he played Dennis I believe that uh, <laughs> that year you know for the for the title um or and semis but uh it was yeah it was impressive like you you don't you don't see players like that that often you know that's yeah, why I was yeah. like everybody was impressed but I was just wanting to to hear your opinion on that um so at some point you know you decide to bring uh Tony Nadal as a co consultant you know in your team uh, whose decision was that? Was it you or was it? Did it come from Felix? No, it's uh, it work? was like a, a, a team decision because when uh, Felix decided to, because we were like Guillaume Marc and myself, we were like two yes. coach with Felix until 2000, uh, 2019. Uh, at the end, so at the end, uh, Felix wanted to have like just one coach uh, mm -hmm. traveling with him all around the, the year, and then of course, then after it was a common decision. Decision after that. To have like somebody or a, a, a player who just finished his career or a coach who had already win Grand Slam to bring to bring us uh, this uh, confidence or this uh, external eye on the work that we are going to do with Felix and to give this confidence because uh, I always take this analogy because I like to go trekking in the mountain because I live in the southwest of France, you know, in Pyrenees. Huh? So if I do like something like more uh, more challenging. I will take a, a, a guide, you know, like somebody who already <laughs> did the, the, the difficult trek. So it's, yes. it's, uh, we decided to, to, to take Tony and it was like a common decision. Decision, in a, We did a, a kind of list and it was a common decision that, uh, that Tony had, uh, first of all, the, um, the, 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 the value, you know, the human value you know, and, uh, and the discipline value and uh, Tony was, uh, yeah, was the, the right person. Uh, Frederick, what was your your personal biggest learning working with uh, Tony as a coach? Um, 
for me was uh, was interesting to to the, the learning was like to keep the thing simple. That's mm -hmm. the, the the main lesson that I, I learned from Tony. Yeah, to 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 keep the thing simple. That's a, a very good. Uh, yeah, that's that, 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 that's the main the, the main point. You, can you can you elaborate a little bit on that? Like yeah. can maybe give some examples uh, just so we have a, a better understanding because we keep hearing this, you know, like uh, yeah, keep yeah, it simple. Course. But so what, to, in, in, uh, from him, yeah. To el mean? elaborate that, it's like, uh, uh, of course, uh, with a player like the we know that Felix has the potential. You know, he's number six, seven. So now, we, before when he was young, we knew that he had the potential. Now. He, he, he's not about potential. He is there, you know. He's there, so that is the step to to big the, to win the big tournaments. So then, uh, for him or for me, it's uh, okay. What what is missing? So then you you go year after year. Okay, you confirm. You have like more and more like a clear image of how he's winning, how he's losing, how we can make the difference. But sometimes, uh, because uh, of course, uh, sometimes you okay. You go like uh, in this direction, and then you come back. You know, you have like six sol six uh, uh, solution, and uh, that's that's uh, exactly where Tony can come. You know, if, if I have like a question of okay, do do we do we have uh, in the game of league to develop more of this uh, uh, offensive situation or defensive mm -hmm. situation? So then he, he help us to to go simple and to to retract the the solution and to stay focused on. Uh, of one thing, you know, that's exactly uh, the, uh, what I was meaning in to keep it simple because uh, okay. uh, that's that's the yeah, that's the, the thing. And then, of course, and after to elaborate a little bit better. So at one point, we will say, okay, uh, do 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 we need to to go like uh, more to the net, for example, to go more transition, or do we need to go like uh, mm -hmm. with uh, more patience from the baseline? It is this kind of thing that you, that an external eyes like Tony can help us. Mm -hmm. Freddy, thank you so much. Uh, we're approaching the, the end of our interview and I just want to um, read you some questions that uh, people from Instagram, like my followers, uh, ask me. So um, the first one is, what's the most surprising thing you have learned whilst working with Felix? No, it's, uh, it's very interesting for me because even if I am 52 years old, uh, I'm, I'm starting to have uh, experience in, the, in this world of tennis and it's... Uh, it's really like uh, amazing to to be able to work with such a, uh, an athlete like that and some somebody who really dedicate on the, on uh, on on doing his best and to go to the top level and he is uh, is uh, is driving you know the his team that's uh, mm -hmm. that's uh, something that uh, I never experienced with other players I would say that with the other players that I work with it was like always like more like uh, the team the coach would would drive a lot you know. And uh, and this balance is with Felix is like uh, he he, he helps us to 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 be better, really better. Mm -hmm. um, if you could work on only one aspect of a fifteen-year-old player game, what would it be? Mm -hmm. Nowadays, with a fifteen uh, boys, uh, fifteen years old boy who have like I, I guess like the capacity to be to, to the to be to the high level. Yes. Is like um, the mental aspect, you know, the mental aspect, like to, like you, you mentioned before, is like to work on this mental aspect, like to, to have like uh, to really understand what does it mean to go to the level. That means like the the discipline, to to really uh, uh, be able to to learn, you know, from the loss, from the wins, you know, to have the, this uh, this. Uh, this uh, to develop this uh, this um, not detachment because detachment it's uh, not the right word is like to to be able to don't be uh, too much disper disturbed with the result that thing to build a mindset to build the mindset that uh, uh, okay to build the mindset to understand to 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 work on that and the mindset will deliver the result and not the the result will be uh, will uh, will drive your mindset you know that's for me this is the key. Because uh, nowadays, nowadays, you all the coach have the possibility to see how you can work technically with the video, the statistics or the tactical points. The we know we know well how to develop the fitness, but the mental aspect is the is still like the something that is uh, the the most difficult to have like a milestone. So that's why 
to develop a mindset that uh, is uncheckable, anti-fragile is the key. Okay, thank you. I have one question also from a young player. I, I think she's uh, maybe 11, 12, uh, this girl. So I started playing tennis at the age of nine. Is it too late to become a good player or pro player? No, uh, before 10, it's not too late because there is some example that uh, that player, they were able to go in the top 100 uh, and, and mm. starting uh, uh, at nine. So that's... Uh, she can believe it's, it. It's, it's possible. Yes, it's that's possible. it. Believe it. Yeah. Believe yeah. it. Yeah. Um, what's it going to take to get Felix to the next level? And I guess the next level is, at this point, is winning a Grand Slam, becoming world number one. Exactly. So the, 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 in terms of result, uh, Felix need, need to uh, wheel check uh, Masters, you know, and, and Grand Slam and, 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 and to do better than number six in the world. Uh, that means for me, it's like it's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of everything because, uh, uh, yeah, he, he beat already uh, all, all the top players, you know. So that means that what he's doing now to de- do it more consistently in the big tournaments, and that means in the process is to do, yeah, to do things uh, mentally, physically, uh, technically, tactically, just a little bit better, but but ninety percent more consistently. Yeah, Fr- uh, Frederick. Last question for today: uh, Where do you think tennis is going? Like, what's the future of tennis? Do you see any trends? Anything interesting? Uh, I will say that the the, the main uh, the main uh, margin of improvement in terms of coaching and development is the is the mental aspect or 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 the body. You know, the brain is working to to be more efficient in the in the learning process in the in our co- coaching. Uh, and this is the yeah, the mental aspect, and then with the neuroscience, the technology. Uh, it's, it's going to be the next step, and of course, in terms of tactical development in tennis, uh, yeah, the, we, we know that like to be on the top, you need of course to have like uh, at least two strength in your games, you no, know, in terms of shots, you no, know, but like the movement also because uh, the tennis is uh, everybody is playing very fast, very aggressive, so you, you, you need to have like a, a good footwork. <laughs> yes. Frederick, thank you so much for your time. I know you're very busy and, uh, w- again, tremendous value talking to you. And uh, all the best uh, to you and Felix and your team uh, in, the, uh, in this season. And hopefully we'll see, you know, you achieve those results uh, on TV and we, we heavily support you guys. So all the best. Thank you, Bogdan.